because we have to lose to win and we're going to lose more than we win. That's just the reality of life, right? I left my passion to chase money. The one moment that I share that sticks out of my mind was when the repo guys were coming to take my car. We turned all the lights in my house off to try to hide like we're not home. I, I failed. At that moment, it's like I failed. We had nowhere to live, 50 grand in debt, no cars, nothing. This bottom point. So I got back up and I got back to my passion. I dove all in. There's a lot of young people out there that feel stuck or people in general, but this is how you create momentum and energy. Never abandon your passion to go make money. You could build a such an incredible career that is so fulfilling and make a fortune around your passion. As you've scaled out your companies and built your brand, what are a couple discoveries along the way? Like, holy cow, I wish I had done this part more or this less. I've always been revealing, talking about my story, being very candid and real and raw, and that's what I've always kind of stuck with. But I would say just do that as much as possible. Share as much as you possibly can, like your, your deepest hardship, your, your hardest moments, because everybody else has dealt with the same shit and when you do that people sense the the real and rawness behind that and the vulnerability and they connect with you and that's how you really build really strong relationships online all right guys hey welcome man on a mission this is gonna be fun i stumbled on a brian to bobby i don't know how long it was maybe six seven months ago but there was a, a clip i don't know when it hit me but when it hit me it was profound and i instantly became a massive fan of him sometimes it might be the most subtle thing that draws you into another human and Brian had this incredible clip about motherfuckers that don't put the cart away. The <laughs> shopping the cart store. away. Oh, yeah. The shopping cart. And oh, I yeah. cannot tell you how many old piece of shit versions of Eric Rock there were that would have left the cart out there like an asshole myself. I'll be honest. <laughs> but what's crazy is when I started leveling up my life, I started looking around and being very honest with myself. What are some things that I can control? And you can make a decision to be a high standard human, even if you're poor as fuck. You could put the cart away. You do not have to be successful, have any kind of good, good behavior habits around you to start making subtle, small decisions. And there's nothing better than using that example of putting the card away. So I've been hooked on Brian ever since. Turns out we have a lot of mutual friends. This guy like rides in high circles and there's a reason he's winning. But it was that message about put your shopping card away that just like lit my soul on fire. Bro, so honored to have oh, you yeah. on the show. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you having me, man. And I love, I love, I have a t-shirt that says it across and I love a lot of people stop me and they react to it. A lot of people ask me what the hell it means. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and uh, for me, it's something I've always kind of had. I've been at Lowe's and I've been, I'm horrible at a lot of things, but one thing I've always done is, is do done the little things like that. It's kind of instilled in me at a young mm -hmm. age. And I say how you do one thing is how you do everything. Right. And if you can't, people always say, oh, it doesn't matter. They, they just they, they always say the little things don't matter, but what they don't know, the, the, the trick is on them. The little things do matter because yeah. the little things we do lead the big things, right? Little things build mm -hmm. up momentum and mm -hmm. it's a sign of your character and integrity, right? Mm -hmm. What what do you do when no one's watching? What do you mm -hmm. do when you're alone, right? What mm -hmm. do you how are you how are you really? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Um but you know, just that kind of stuff. It's so how good. I live my life. Discipline, right? Yeah. Discipline is everything for me. Cause like I said, I've I've had nothing and I've had millions and I've been a lot of places in between uh, and discipline and integrity are kind of what I built it on. Right. Mm. You know, yeah, this, I, this I barely graduated actually, high school. So like, how, yeah, you know, from, from, a, from a real dude that's had nothing that barely graduated high school. I know a lot of you guys listen to this want success and um, you guys are looking for like a magic pill. There's no magic pill out there. It's not, it's not anything you know, groundbreaking or rocket science. It's just doing the shit you hate to do every day, mm. seven days a week. Mm. You know what I mean? Do it for years mm. and you'll be surprised what happens, right? Yeah. You guys know. Mm. Yeah, this is mm. the game right here. Absolutely. This, like, I mean, this is actually the game. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. You it's know what not, I mean? Everyone wants to get rich. Thing. We all want to get rich as fuck. Like, bottom line, everyone wants to yeah. get rich, but they're looking yeah. in the wrong place. We're not seeking money, baby. We're yeah. seeking being valuable. We mm. need to be valuable, and demand needs to swarm around mm. us. And when demand swarms around you, opportunity swarms around you. But it's not like the what. It never is. When you guys have all heard the thing, it's the who, not yeah. the how. It's, but it is true. Yeah. Who the fuck are you that makes these decisions? That is a, such a more powerful question than how do you make these yeah. decisions. Mm. Like, exactly. what kind of person do you need to be? Well, you need to be a person that fucking bleeds, that like is what they say they are through the core and core, and it comes down to character. You you tapped into it in character. Yeah, you can yeah. see why I love him, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. you're the similar 100%. spirit animal. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We uh, you know, and I, I go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, and I was like, just the kind of stuff like I said. It's just 
what do you do when no one's around? And that's what I talk about when I, when I teach and my clients and stuff like that is like ties into discipline. Like, you know, for example, I like to tell this story, you know, I'm, you know, I run multiple companies. I have four kids in multiple competitive sports. I work out two, three, two times a day. And everyone's like, how do you do it? And I'm like, what do you mean? How the fuck do I do it? Like, how do I not do it? Like, mm. you know, I'm never going back to where I was. And mm. for example, like, I have these little battles that I have with myself and I know all you guys listening to have them as well, but it's just that slight decision you make. For example, I do my stairs at night. I do stairs in the morning fasted like 5 a.m., get my day going, usually work out middle of the day. And then when I'm really trying to get lean, I do stairs at night as well. And typically my day starts at 5 a.m. and this is like at 11 p.m. Mm. at night. And I have the big stair mill in my garage and I do it in the dark. Like Batman, mm. like a weirdo. I just, it's, mm. for some reason, it's calming for me to do it mm. in the dark. And I do these stairs and I tell people this because I, I try to be as real and raw as possible so they can relate to it, right? And I do these stairs and I do 30 minutes. And, you know, I, I, I do a lot during the day. I'm exhausted at 11 p.m. at night after I wake up at 5 p.m., at mm. 5 a.m., right? And I'm doing these stairs and I always try to do them for, you know, 30 minutes. 30 minutes in the morning, hour workout, 30 minutes at night. Wow. And I'm doing the stairs and sometimes I'm fucking exhausted. I get off. I get off at 25 minutes and this happens, you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to act like I'm some fucking perfect example of everything. Right. Cause none of us are, but the point of this is, is I get off the stairs. I literally go to my, through my garage, go to my kitchen door and literally audibly call myself a bitch. And I turn back around and I go back on the stairs and I finish the last five minutes. Now, nobody knows if mm. I did that, but you know who knows? Mm. I fucking know. Mm. And it's those little things like that, those little decisions that you make as an individual on a daily basis in everything you do, when you can make keep those promises you keep to yourself, that's when you start to become successful. When you do that, not just once or to- twice, but you do that every fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's the heart the of starts to happen, right? It, it's the heart of true self esteem, like that whole all the literature on telling a kid they're great. No, 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 no. Like, like they need an experiential of uh, just being consistently disciplined. And then you don't need to tell them they're great, although it's loving to do so. Um, True self-esteem is based on what only you know and see. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I and I think the market will see through you too. So you you if you're it depends on what you're preaching, but if you're gonna preach something and if you're gonna try to lead like a lot of the game, we just had a guy in our studio, man. Like, you know, he won a Super Bowl and he was the MVP of Super Bowl. So at some point, this guy's at the height of what every little boy on planet yeah. Earth dreams of being. Not that only did he win a Super Bowl, MVP. He was the MVP <laughs> quarterback. Of the Super Bowl. So you can yeah. imagine what kind of leader and discipline, Mark but it doesn't matter. You go wherever winning exists. And at the core of it is a character of like showing up consistently for a lifetime. Mm. And like you can try to game the system. But like, there's going to be guys that blow right past you, and you're always going to be asking yourself, "Well, why does an opportunity hip happen to me?" Like, you're going to have a lot of victim mentality, like shit, go around you constantly if you aren't doing the stuff when no one's looking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's sure. where opportunities sure. start showing up. Is when you live and die this way. Like, the identity is more important than probably anything. And most 100%. people, I think, they don't teach us in school, number one. Like, this isn't a, no. a thing in school. Sports may be the closest place you get to it, but I apply a lot of the sports, like, same psychology into business. It's all relative. It's all the same things. And if it could start with your physical presentation that you present to the world, that shows more truth about you than anything you can do. Mm. People wonder why, like, when, when, when they get near me and they want to make all this money, the first place I go is, well, look at your body. Your body's telling the world a lie. Like, it tells me I can't trust you. And that may be harsh for some people. And it doesn't mean you can't be successful. But in the modern era, I think you're broke as fuck if you don't have health. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want it. Like, keep it. I'll be poor and happy, like, knowing that I'm disciplined. I agree. 100%. I agree. I mean, you... Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add to that. Just there's this physician I love, Dr. Sean Amara, but he talks about, you know, one of the reasons our youth aren't getting around the elders for to gather their wisdom is they're just so such in poor health and they unconsciously instinctively this is kind of an unconscious process they're like you know i don't know if i are they going to lead me to a a virtuous flourishing life they don't look healthy why would i why would i seek their wisdom about finance or about relationships and anyway your brand uh getting to know you before this interview it's obviously built on a bedrock of of this value Yeah, money's 100%. a lot. Money's a lot All easier. All that kind of stuff. What? 
Yeah. Like you just said, I mean, even at the professional level, you know, you have everyone that makes to the pros, you have to be, you know, have to put in some sort of work, but honestly, when you get to the pros then you really start to get those, you know, those people that stand out and the MVPs, like, you know, everyone doing the minimum required, but then you have the greats like Kobe and like the MVPs and stuff like that, where they go above and beyond, even at mm. that level, right? They're, mm. they're showing up hours before they're leaving hours later. And then they stand out even in a group of people that are at a professional level, right? And then take that mindset and take that work ethic and use that at whatever level, whatever you're doing. And you're going to stand out. Even if you're a nine to five employee at some corporation, you know, and that's the conversation I have. Like it, you, everyone's not built to be an entrepreneur, but if you have this discipline, this mindset and this work ethic and you instill it in everything you do, that's what my brand is called till you collapse. It's a mm -hmm. mindset and it's a work ethic. Do you go till you collapse every day? Mm -hmm. right. Like physically, mentally, you leave it all out there. What kind of effort do you give in every conversation when you shake someone's hand, how you look them in the eye, how you interact with people? Like mm. everything you do, like I said, the little things matter. Yeah. You look people in the eye when you walk by and say fucking hello. Like people don't even talk <laughs> to each it. other anymore now. They're sitting yeah. down looking at their phone. Yeah. And I try to get around and be old school and talk to people and they look at yeah. me like I'm crazy. I'm like, yeah. I'm just trying to say hello. This is good. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's 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 the little things like that. And, yeah. and you, yeah. you can smile and look at someone and say hello to them. And totally make their day totally. because nobody else is doing it, right? No. Yeah, right. It's just that little shit like that, and mm. um, you know, it's it's the the foundation of everything. And I, I'm more old school. I'm 41 years old, so you know, I feel like I'm a different e breed at this age group, right? And I, and I and I'm trying to instill this. One of my missions is, you know, not only make helping people become the best version of themselves, you know, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, but like the youth. You know, mm. I'm trying to work with the youth because the problem is. A lot of the youth doesn't have men and women that are teaching them these old school values and ethics that were built when we were raised. Yeah. You know, I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm, yeah. I know. I'm 40, guys, yeah. 49. Yeah. Yeah. So then, right. You guys know exactly what I'm talking 100%, about. hundred yeah. percent, brother. You know, this yeah. stuff's, yeah. the principles here are universal. And at this day and age with all this technology, all this options, it is more easier to blow past the competition than ever if you have eyes to see. But yeah. it'll be these old school characteristics that actually become the vehicle for how you move fast. Yeah. Like, because everyone wants to do it overnight. It really doesn't happen overnight, but you can skip a lot of steps if you just mm -hmm. understand things that Brian's talking about. Yeah. Shake someone's hand, look them in the eye. Yes. I mean, cus customer service in, the, in this era is fucking dead. Yeah. And I run retail, oh. I run retail businesses for the last decade. Like, that's, that's the core yeah. business of what I do. And it is so easy. To win your, to really understand the art of great customer service and start really winning in life. Yeah. But kids don't understand it. They don't. They do the bare fucking minimum. And like for me, I don't yeah. know. I, I guess I needed entrepreneurship to come into my life to smack me upside the head because now I treat a customer so different. I had a lot of natural instincts, but I had to make the commitment into entrepreneurship to fully expose mm -hmm. me to the, my greatest self. So for me, mm -hmm. I yeah. I think that there's a great leader in everyone, and likely it's going to be a leader that that is pulled out of you that is that is really not dependent on anybody and that is something that i think is true freedom in life so number one but it doesn't you're right not everyone's built for this mm -hmm. and that's fine mm -hmm. you could attach yourself to momentum and be so valuable that 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 i can't live without you and i'll take you with me motherfucker let's ride 100 percent. like it's so easy to win it doesn't really matter what your temperament is but you have to be doing these things that he talks about when no one's looking i'm fired up <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I like it. So we, uh, I, like I want to help the audience get those who don't know you and already are hooked on your yeah. message, Brian. Like, For sure. A um, couple, obviously, it would take 100 conversations to hear all the particulars, but this is a two-part question. Like Eric said earlier yeah. to open the show, right before the pre-talk banter, like there's this idea you can go as high as you've been low. And we like to ask people about, like, take us back to a hardship or a bottom for you and then – maybe in that you could tell a bit of your story and, and how you ended up where for you are sure. today. But like what, what comes to your mind immediately yeah. when we ask you that? I'll talk about it. So for me, what instantly goes, comes to my mind is the chip on my shoulder that mm -hmm. keeps me yeah. every mm -hmm. day while I woke up as much fire as I have every day, you know, mm -hmm. um, is about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, when I was kind of my lowest pay place financially, I, uh, 
you know, me, I'm old school. So I pride myself on being the provider. You know, I've always been, you know, sole income in my household and, you know, four kids, that's a crazy full-time job in itself. Right. So much respect yeah. for that. Yeah, bro. I have four I, kids I, too. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. My <laughs> wife, my wife handles that. And I'm like, I've always taken the role as, you know, the father, the provider, I'll, I'll pay the bills or whatnot. And back then I had, you know, I, I was always fish fitness has been my passion. So I got in the fitness industry at a young age, you know, mm -hmm. 18 years old, personal training, helping people lose hundreds of pounds. That really is my passion and really my calling and how my upper level coaching kind of evolved now. But I was a trainer. I was breaking records, you know, sales, selling $40,000 in training at 24 hour fitness at 18 years old. Like just, you know, natural born salesperson. Mm. And, um, I was training, 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 loving it, doing my passion, you know, helping people transform their lives. And guys don't ever make this mistake. I know you hear it, but I lived it. This is mm. coming from someone that's lived it and it haunts them every day. And I mean, thankfully I'm thankful for that because it pushes me and I wouldn't probably want to be where I am now if I didn't have that huge loss. Right. Yeah. Cause we have to lose to win and we're yeah. going to lose more than we win. That's just the reality of life. Right. Yes. So I, uh, I left my passion to chase money. Mm. Don't ever leave your passion to chase money. Find a way to make a lot of money doing your passion or some form of your passion. Totally agree. So good. So, some form of your passion, right? Yeah. Um, you can figure out a way to monetize it. There's enough yes. ways nowadays. Be creative. Whatever mm. your passion is, like I said, this is I have a fitness apparel brand. Fitness is my passion. I'm not a lo I don't love apparel. I'm not a fashionable guy. I wear t shirts all day long and hats, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. it's in the fitness realm, right? So yeah. it's still kind of in that that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. So so I left my passion to chase money. I got in the real estate industry. You guys remember around 2005 to 2008, the real estate I do. industry was going mm -hmm. crazy. Everyone Painful. knows, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So I left my passion and I, I didn't grow up around a lot of money. I hadn't seen a lot of money. Um, so, you know, I, I, I instantly got into that industry and I, you know, I'm a great salesperson and I made like six figures my first month. <laughs> and I had never, I've never made six figures in my life. I think I was making 40 grand a year as a trainer, 30 grand a year at 18, mm -hmm. 19 yeah. years old. Sure, sure. And like I said, this, this, this was years, you know, this is when I was about 25, 26, yeah, you know, but yeah. like I said, I hadn't been making a lot of money. I was back then I was, you know, I liked money, but I, I mean, I just was making 40, 50, 60 grand a year, you know, yeah. training, living, you know, young, no worries. And that was I good back then. Inflation wasn't where it's at. Yeah, I, trust me, bro. Sure. Like people I today no don't kids, get it. No young people. I was a meathead. All You're, I did is work yeah. out all day. I trained my clients. Had nice happy, kicks right? on. You had the watch. Yeah, doing what yeah, I love. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I had Ferrari and Lamborghini posters on my wall and I, I knew I wanted to drive those kind of cars, you know, but I wasn't there yet here, sure. up here. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I did that. I made tons of money quick, you know, and I'm like, this is never going to end. This is great. So I start spending tons of money. You know, we all know it. Like mm -hmm. they start spending money. You know, I hadn't been educated on money and management and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I was young and spending money and, you know, I, I made a lot of money and this went on for, you know, a couple of years. Right. And at that point, you know, I, I got married, had my first kid, you know, life's moving on. You're succeeding big great. time from all yeah. outward appearances, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, right. But, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being stupid with my money just because I hadn't been educated on it. I had no one really leading the way. Just like I taught myself how to work out. Like from 13 years old, I was an overweight kid. No one taught me how to work out. There was no podcast. There was no internet. There was none of this shit. My dad hadn't worked out a day in my li his life. He didn't teach me. I just took the initiative and taught myself. So, you know, and then the, the crash hit, you know, in 2008. Yeah. And where I'm getting at my lowest point is, you know, I'm very stubborn and I, and I, I, I tried to stick into it. You know, I like I had some money saved up, right? And I, I tried to stick into it probably too long until everything was gone. I was like 50 grand in debt. And I remember the one moment that I share that sticks out of my mind was when the repo guys were coming to take my car. And I'm literally, it's at nighttime. I'm yeah. at, it's at nighttime and I'm standing in a room with my wife and my newborn baby, you know, one year old baby. And we ha we turn all the lights in my house off to try to hide like we're not home. Mm -hmm. And we're standing in the fucking dark house oh, bro. as a man. My only role as a provider is a husband and a father. And those are my two roles still. And the two roles I take the greatest pride in succeeding in. Because that's like my calling, right? I'm old yeah. school. And uh, I, I failed. At that moment, it's like I failed. And these guys are flashing flashlights through our house. You see them in a dark house. And I'll never forget that moment. It like gives me chills even talking about it. And it like 
Hmm. It just takes me back to, and that's the time, that moment I thought of, like, that's the ultimate failure for hmm. me. Like I yeah. let her down, I let my kids oh, down. Uh, and, um, basically we got, we had nowhere to live, 50 grand in debt, no cars, nothing, just bottom point. And that was, yeah. like I said, about 13, 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just fucking, I fell down. I got, I got knocked on the ground and what do you do? You either lay down or you get back up. So I got yeah. back up. And I got back to my passion. I'm like, I'm never leaving my passion again. And I jumped right back in the fitness mm. industry. Um, and, and I accelerated rather quickly. I went to sales because I knew I had a family. I had another baby on the way. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to make more money than, you know, just yeah, personal, yeah. personal trainer. Sure. I need to, you know, so I, 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 I uh, worked my ass off, you know, all the, all discipline, work ethic, taking action, the stuff that I'm good at, the basics foundation that I, I kick ass in. I suck at everything else, but I'm good at the important shit. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, so I did that and I rose within the company within a year. I was a sales general manager of the biggest gyms in a gym corporation locally. Um, I was running hundred thousand square foot gyms, doing sales training with membership sales, personal training, personal sales as well. Not only did my teams break sales record, but individually I was still shitting on them, yeah. breaking second sales. Yeah, awesome. I was, I was like the manager leader. that sold the most too. And yeah. my teams, all of us sold, I would lead by example, right? Yeah, sure. So, you know, and that's what I did. I, and I was making 150 grand a year. Yeah. 150 grand a year, though, in California with four kids, yeah, with four yeah. taxes, you're still broke. You're you. still broke. You know what I mean? So I was, I was making that kind of money working, you know, seven to nine, seven days a week. Yeah, you're giving it missing all. Missing my kids' sports events. Yeah. Giving it all. But, like, still, like, I wasn't driving a Lambo Ferrari. Had no savings. Still didn't living that game out yet. paycheck. <laughs> And then that's when I was this. I was 31 years old, so 10 years ago, and that's when I started this first company. Until yep. you collapse, I started 10 years ago, yeah. and I started on the side, and I burnt the candle at both ends. Literally worked 18 hour, 20 hour days for mm-hmm. about a year. Mm-hmm. You know, the main gig during the day, and every free second after that was uh, built on building the company. Yep. You know, and then it got to a certain point after a year, and I had to make that choice. You know, and I I dove all in. And then that's kind of led me where I am now. You know, it's yeah. been nine years since that point. Before we talk about that chapter, which is where all the, the real money's at, I don't want to skip past some of the money you just talked about. For sure. Which, yeah. which is super valuable. And you, Matt, can you see why I like Brian so yeah, much? Yeah, totally. Yeah. He's like a spitting image of things that I've said, like like mm-hmm. direct quotes that, that I hear you say. It's cool to know you've got brothers out in the universe that have been through. It's funny, man. I remember coming out of my house to go to work one day, my car was gone. I had, a, I had like my dream car at some point in my life. It was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And I finally said, oh. I got a couple payments behind. Like I was gonna get yeah. there. Like I thought I could get past anything. I was so so good with my words, my mouth. And mm-hmm. I truly trusted yeah. my that I'd get out. I knew I was a little behind, bro. And they did it faster than I thought they were gonna do it. It was gone. And I can't tell Dang. you how sick that feeling was in my soul. My yeah. car's fucking gone. Like ultimate failure. Like, you know, I get mm-hmm. that feeling and that sentiment. Yeah. Um, you said something that just caught my mind too. You said it, you said it hadn't happened up here yet. Like, okay, I, I always mm-hmm. talk about like it happens here long before it manufactures here. And you're talking yeah. about like the pre to having it up here is you don't even have it there. We need to get it here first. And this is where it's all made. All the real money, you guys, is made in the foundation of before momentum starts to happen. Mm. You're just collecting data almost. But most people get to a place where they're comfortable. They would have been satisfied with 150K. That's good enough for some people. But Brian's standards, that's not okay with. He knew it. Like He knew he was going to mm. have to figure out the game. I call it the game. If, you don't, if you're not playing in the game, then you're never going to get like to where where all the big money's at, where the big dreams are, where the big impact is. You've got to know how the world works. And if you are being controlled carrot to carrot by other people that are in the game and you're kind of a pawn in their world, it's not going to work for you, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I know we're going to get there, but you, you said so much gold here and you talked about how great you were in sales, which I think is one of the most common things I see in, in wealth is these people know how to sell. They know how to sell. So if you don't know how to sell, go figure out how to sell. Like, I think anybody can learn how to sell. And let's tee them up with some gold real quick. Brian, can you give this audience, because I know they're looking for the money, right? Where's the money at, baby? Mm -hmm. Brian, tell Mm -hmm. these people how they can go be more valuable and how they can start selling something. Start there. Let's just give it to me. Well, here's the thing. Sales is, you know, I naturally, you know, you naturally a lot of people, not a lot of people have it. Naturally, you either have it or you don't. But like with anything... Repetition, learning your craft, 
you know, yeah, you get better. And the thing is, is with sales, it's just experience in time. I've literally been in, I mean, I'm Persian. I'm Persian and Italian. So, you know, we got sales in our blood. It's all <laughs> yeah, my dad yeah. did his whole life. My, my dad came, my dad came over in the seventies and all he knew was sales. So all I've ever been around is sales, seeing my dad sell. So for me, it was something I always was around. And then my first job, any job and every job I ever have was commission sales. So just interacting with people, talking to people. So for me, it was experience. I mean, just just years in the time. So for anyone out there, you know, the main thing is with sales is people are afraid. They're afraid to ask questions. They're afraid to talk to people. And they don't listen enough. They talk more than they listen. Like sales is listening. Just ask a question and shut the fuck up and listen and let them talk. Let them talk. I mean, that's why you have two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to listen more than you talk. But sales most people talk themselves out of a sale. All they do is talk, 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 talk. They don't let even the person talk. And before you know it, you're trying to sell something and you, you, you pitch the sale. And before the client even can answer you, you're like already discounting your price before the client even talked, right? So I think mm-hmm. people just – it's just basic knowledge with sales. And, and, and just experience is just – people are so – just like why people can't turn the phone around and, and make a video – it's like one of the hardest things, like all my clients, everybody I talk to, like just even turning your social media around and making a little video and talking in the mm. phone is like the hardest thing. You guys know what I'm talking mm. about for most people. Yeah. And it's like, it, it shouldn't be that hard, but like how you get better at it, you just do it There's just, a, and realize you're going to suck and it's okay to suck. It's yeah, okay to suck. You're yeah. not going to be good at it. This is such a one. good topic. I, I shared this story topic. the other day. I, I, I don't know, a few years ago, we bought a, a new car, like a Forerunner, at a Toyota dealership here locally in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I went in there and I was like, I, wa- I walked right up to the desk. I was like, who's your number one sales like killer in the in the store? And they mentioned his name and it's like, okay, I want to work with him. Because I knew, right. I knew I would feel natural and loved. And I knew he, the bet was he's going to listen to me. My wife's going to feel at ease about this whole thing. Yeah, and it yeah. was true. He didn't talk too much. He was amazing. It felt oh. totally natural. Nice. You know, it, you remind me of that. Like yeah, people, also, it's almost like people go yeah. split personality. They're, oh, I'm selling. And then they get weird. Well, I think you just tapped into the psychology yeah. of most people. Actually, most people love to be sold. They want to be sold. But you, yeah, never, yeah. you ever seen a bad salesman? It's painful. And I love when yeah. there's a good salesman. You know why I love a good salesman? Because I see small bits of me in him when I was younger. Oftentimes yeah. that's a sentiment that I get and it becomes respect. I want that guy to get a you commission. You want him to win. I want him to win, baby. Yeah. I love people that are out like doing the hard stuff. They're like, you know yeah, what I mean? They're earning it. Like yeah. I love to hear the kid. You know when the best sales happen too? We're not even talking about the car, baby. We're talking about yeah. death and yeah. life and like, like what is it that really moves people? Yeah. What is, like get some heart in this shit. Yeah. But it means you gotta care about people. You need to remember their name and the dog's name and the child's name. It can't be about yeah. the, the the product. It has to be so yeah. much more about the love and the relationships. I don't know. This is just my mm-hmm. style. I love talking about sales and the fact that you brought it up that, that yeah. I could see you're like my Hell spirit yeah. dog down. There. Are you in California? <laughs> sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'll be down yeah, there. We got to. We'll get it. But yeah. there, there's. Nice. This is such I mean, a good topic. By. Yeah, I got a whole. I got a whole HQ. I would love to have you on I'm, my podcast. I'm in, I have baby. a live studio here. I have a gym. We have a thing we do called Podcast and Pump and we get like a little workout. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. sweet. You're yeah. speaking so my language. It's, a, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. But sales is like, mm. sales is the number one best thing. You can always fall back on sales, right? Yeah. If you, like you said, if you know how to sell, you can sell anything. It's always there. And you can make decent money. You can make, you know, yep. I know people that make five, six, seven hundred grand selling for poor companies. 100%. They're not intra- mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. They, it's they, lucrative. They're employees for companies selling, right? I so, remember thinking this, it, Brian. It's really, uh, I, I remember thinking this. If, I, if all this goes to shit, I could go knock on doors yeah. And I could I could shovel driveways in the snow. It doesn't matter. I could easily make a thousand bucks a day. And now think about all the young people out there that are hearing me say that. Is that is that true? Fuck yeah, it's true. Watch me, man. I'll go to the best neighborhoods in town. I will pour my heart out at every door. Mary's gonna answer the a door. Watch their and she's windows. Say, oh, you are so sweet because I'm yeah. gonna put my heart yeah. there. I'm gonna have a good feeling, a good energy. I understand customer service. And even if I don't get the mm-hmm. sale, I still won, baby, because I developed a relationship yeah. that's so rare. Mm-hmm. But the point is, is like people don't think this way. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm it's smarter a, better, but I understood nowadays. this point about how I can rely on that tactic because there's always someone that needs something done. And yeah. I could be that guy. And I know yeah. I know it's not. It's probably hard to scale that if it's just me doing it. I'll yeah. figure that out later. Yeah, yeah. But right now, I can make 100%. money to pay my bills today. Right? 100%. I don't know, man. And you just hit the nail on the head. Like I said, go to those go to those nicer areas because people like that, you know, people like us 
I pay people to do those kind of things because my time is more valuable somewhere else. Exactly. So you hit the nail on the head. That's you right. Know? Yeah. Mm. And when you it's develop huge. one or two good relationships, that always leads to 10 or t 20 more. Now you're becoming someone that has demand. Like I, literally I can create a blueprint for anyone. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like. I will turn you into a machine if you come work for me. It doesn't matter. But this is how I love to lead. This is how I love to inspire. All the guys in our retail mm -hmm. business for years, they all had side hustles. They were all making hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years moving our clients. I'm in furniture. So it was really easy to know mm -hmm. that half my clientele, no, actually 75% of my clients are in some kind of life change. They just bought a new home. This, this furniture is not going to fit. There's, there's always something. A marriage, a marriage yeah. happened, a combining of families. In that volatility is where another guy that has eyes to see could always capitalize. Hey, do you need some stuff moved around? You know, wh well, what do you charge? Well, let me come bid the job out. You know, like it's so easy. Start asking the yeah. right questions. Next thing you know, you yeah. did an hour work and she just wrote you a $600 check. <laughs> Boom, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I love oh, to yeah. lead this way. And, and this is something that I don't care where you're at in life. We could teach this. And like, this is my way of fighting back against the shit that I think is destroying freedom. Mm -hmm. If you know that you yeah. can provide value in the world, bro, there's mm -hmm. enough to go around. Yeah, you, there you, is. You'll flourish wherever you're dropped. Yeah. So and like we talked around. about earlier, there's a lot of opportunity there That's because everywhere. a lot of people, they do the bare minimum. For right. And so if you stand out, yeah, you're going to you're going to yeah. you're going to stand out now more than ever. Like, you know what I mean? You're going to stand 100%. up now. More. There's no more opportunity. It's, just, it's right. just crazy. But right. you, uh, also, yeah. you also talked about, and this was where I was trying to end. I had to tee you up because you... You went past your story so quick, and there's too yeah. much money there to yeah. leave on the table. Yeah. We could do this for hours, by the way, but I hope people yeah, get a sense sure. of, like, this is the shit that moves the, the needle. This is what really moves the needle when you're getting your start. There's a lot of young people out there that feel stuck, yeah, or yeah. people in general, but this is how you create momentum and energy. You talked about passion. Never abandon your passion mm -hmm. to go make money. Now, I think this resonates for the next, maybe the next chapter of people who have gotten kind of comfortable. Mm -hmm. They've sinking into something, and I agree. What's crazy is... Like, you're right. You could build a mm. such an incredible career that is so fulfilling and make a fortune around your passion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you can. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter what it is. You can. It could be you cakes, can. right? It could be. Yeah, you can. It doesn't matter. You can. Well, here's the, problem I, here's the problem I see, too. A lot of people, like, they have a passion, and, and they don't know how to find a way to turn their passion into money. So it's almost like they're like, they think it's either passion or money. I'm mm. like, no, you can have motherfucking passion and money. Too. Have it There's all. There's no reason why you can't. Yeah. Have it all. You know, all. like I said, my, my passion is not fitness apparel. The main thing I sell is women's leggings. <laughs> I'm a 215-pound dude. Like, I don't wear women's <laughs> leggings, but Amazing. I'm passionate about this industry. industry. I'm passionate about fitness. I'm passionate about, you know, people reaching their fitness goals and looking amazing and feeling amazing in their clothes. Yeah. That's the thing I'm behind, mm. right? Mm. So how do I scale that? How That's do right. I create an eight figure brand based on that right so i'm mm -hmm. not going to make eight figures in this gym training you know no. mary and sally for eight hours a day but you know what am i going to do mm. i transitioned a little bit so anybody can do that with their yeah. passion don't get lost so deep in your passion that you're just like oh i'm all about passion well you got to pay your damn bills yeah. your passion won't pay your bills unless you monetize it yeah. right there's no harm it's not a bad thing to monetize your passion like yeah. you know so many people think it's like it's not a bad thing to want to make money. Like, I'm I with feel you, like bro. Younger age too. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, you can and do so much p positive shit with money. Like, right? Impact. I, mm. I think the vehicle to really tap into that you're a living example of, which I love. I think we're living examples of it. The people that are winning in this modern era, the quickest way in the in, to use the resource around you to get momentum around your passion is build a personal brand. Anybody can do it. And I and I challenge people with this thought. If Ben yeah. Franklin were alive today, people think that like that has something to do with social media. Now that's part of the tools to leveraging it, but no, the algorithm of life has been around long before there was social media, my friend. Trust mm -hmm. me when I tell you, personal mm -hmm. brand is everything. Yeah. Like, does your name mean something? Okay. Does it carry weight? Do people want to be near your name? Do you have demand? It's really yeah. simple. But now more now than ever, you have access to crazy amazing tools to start becoming consistent at something and building your own brand that has meaning and value. And so many people don't tap into it and make, they're so afraid of the camera, but I'm telling you, man, some of the old titans of our industry, these guys were actually masters at personal brand. We don't know all the businesses that Ben Franklin owned or he invested in, and he invested in a lot. The guy was a machine, even in the early days of America. But we remember his name. Yeah, He's the ultimate example yeah. of, a, of a strong personal 100%. brand. But. 100%. I I, um, I love to teach that too, Brian. I don't know if in your work, 
you know, we want to expose yeah. our people to where they may be winning. Do you do a yeah, lot of work sure. with personal brand? Yeah, for sure. That's part of it. You know, I have a, I have a coaching program that I do and part of that is branding and social media and all that kind of stuff, just because it's what I've used to build my brands, you know? And so everybody can do it and everybody should be doing it, you know? But the thing is, the number one thing is most people are just scared what people think of them. Yeah. That's, that's the main fear. They're mm. so paralyzed by what people think of them. They don't post, they don't want to post on social media. They don't want to post that. They want to post that because they're worried about everybody mm. watching them and what they'll think. And it just holds them it affects their life. You what know, have it affects you, their life and what they do. What have you discovered uh, as you've scaled out your companies and built your brand to such a high level? Like, what have you discovered? Like, what what are a couple discoveries along the way? Like, holy cow, I wish I had done this part more or this less. or Not so I much mean, like, just, uh, you know, not so much tactics, not like, you know, the, the tool, but yeah. like your own personal journey yeah. on that. Like, yeah, what you reveal about well, yourself. I just I wish I would have, you know. I would, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, here's the thing for me, I've, I'd always been like, as far as I've always been pretty good at that. Like for me, like I, I've been building my personal brand for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've always been revealing, talking about my story, being very candid and real and raw. And that's what I've always kind of stuck with. I know that's not the norm, but I would say just do that as much as possible. Like share. Sh I mean, I know, I know you need to have a private life and a personal life, but yeah. You know, share as much as you can. Share as much as you possibly can, like your, your deepest hardships, your, your hardest moments, because everybody else has dealt with the same shit. And when yep. you do that, people sense the the real and rawness behind that and the vulnerability, mm. and they connect with you. And that's how you really build re really strong relationships online with, with potential friends or even people that are going to be your clients and, and invest in your business. Sure. They, they can sense when it's real, too. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And then... You build those relationships and they turn into customers, they turn into friends, they turn into everything just because you shared something that you were so scared to share yeah. for so long. Mm. I would say just do it. Just do it and, and, and start and be consistent. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I know it's simple, but it's I love it. it, it everything it, it, everything worthwhile is simple. Done, you know? and, <laughs> no, it's I love it. Yeah. And it's simple and and, and and that's just the thing is they're not doing it. Yeah. And they're not doing it. And then or they record something, they record something fifteen times and then they never post it. Sure. And like me. I record something one take and I post even one if take, I stutter baby. and look like an idiot and sound like an idiot, I still was. post it. I don't That's care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I stuttered. I looked like an idiot. Who yeah. cares? You know? Mm -hmm. I'm with you, man. People do business with so, people they trust. And it's not hard to get trust yeah. in the marketplace with a little bit of consistency, a little bit of vulnerability, which is actually a superpower, a little bit of heart, soul, passion, a little bit of insight. There's a, you know, I worked with Ed. I know you're friends with Ed Milet, but one of the things that he made yeah. me very yeah. aware of early on in, in, when I started working with him he made me very aware of this problem because I was successful in business, but I wasn't out in, in the light doing it. I was, I was leading great from behind the scenes, but I didn't leverage social media correctly. Mm -hmm. And so as I pursued that next chapter of my life, one of the first things I became very aware of that helped the imposter inside my own head, which this was really scary for the, this was true, I'm being honest, which resonates with a lot of people, even mm -hmm. something as subtle as that. But what, 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 what I clicked onto really quick that was very helpful for me is there so many different Eric Rocks that I could have helped? I could have held my hand, put an arm around my own my own back when I was 20, 21, 22, yeah. 23, 24. There's so many fucking people out there that I resonate with that I would help. And all I have to do is look at the old versions of me. And I had no one like me around during all those hard years. I wish yeah. I would have. And so me stepping in the light, yeah. I attach purpose to it. And when you attach purpose and meaning to a thing, it can change the action and the outcome around it. And I'll just say this, you have to create a purpose and a why that's more powerful than your insecurity. Because we all feel this way. Everyone's a little yeah. uncomfortable. How did that look? What is Mary going to yeah. think? What are my family yeah. going to think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No one's all, immune to it. I mean, yeah, we all care about that, right? Yeah, it's, right. It's just everybody, everybody, human everybody's nature. struggling with the same shit. Yeah, it's, it's human nature. Right? And we, you know, what I like to tell people is, this is what I like to tell people, is with social media, you know, you know who who you should be every time on social media. Every video, every story, every post, everything that you do is be the person, the person that you are when you're with your closest friend. You know, like think about your five closest friends, like your five closest friend groups. You know, you're, you're the people you're most comfortable with. Those people, yeah. after you guys have a couple drinks together, and you really loosen up a little bit. If you don't drink, that's fine. But I just like to use that analogy. Sure. You know, um, and then just whoever that person is when you're around your closest people, when you have a couple of drinks, you're just laughing, your guard's down, you're, you are genuinely who you are yep. because mm -hmm. you have no guard at all, right? 
try to convey that person. Think about who that person yeah. is, you know? And it's just, it's crazy too, because I'll watch people talk to me and then, and then try to, you know, do something with social media. And it's almost like it's different. There's someone completely different. Yeah. I see it all the time. And I'm like, you don't need to do that. I, I, I liked you a lot better who you were right here. Like just yeah. be that person. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they think they're mm-hmm. being someone better that more people are going to relate to, mm-hmm. but they're not really. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't resonate. This is over. No, it's just over overthinking the whole thing. I'm and with that's you. with anything. Right. Yeah. You know? And if you know, if you reveal your real self to the world, even if there's a ton of flaws into it, like at least you're leading with the truth. And if you do have work to do on yourself, there's no better accountability holder to your own life than putting a mirror up to yourself. And if you cringe at your own shit when you're being authentic and real, maybe you have some work to do. But my point is this, you could build a system and a process around doing it and it only makes you better. It makes you more dynamic. You're gonna get better. You're gonna look better. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna start curating your message better. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if you are cringing over this, cause that's a real problem. And if you really yeah. do have personality flaws that's mm-hmm. exposed themselves online. Well, it doesn't matter. Like now start becoming a higher disciplined human. Yeah. Like hold up high standards and live yeah. and die by them. I have all these yeah. rules and you yeah. kind of reminded me of one of them. Yeah. I ble- a rule of mine, it's a bizarre rule. I actually have it on my wrist, but I bleed into e- I have a I bleed into every room I walk into. It's a catabolic yeah. like response that my that. brain has to just fucking yeah. bleed. And how it yeah. comes out is how it comes out. But it does. Yeah. It's almost like a shot of adrenaline and it's a deep breath. And it doesn't yeah. matter if I'm nervous, if I'm scared, if, if my mentor's there, if, if my hero's there, if, if anybody I admire that might normally kind of like dumb down, I know I'm going to go leave a mark and I'm not going to be obscene. Like I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave a valuable piece of my soul in that room. And this type of real energy, people respond well to it. Mm. It didn't hurt me. It only catapulted mm-hmm. me up. It made me more rememberable. And at the end of the day, like I developed some incredible relationships with this rule of bleed into every fucking room I walk into, regardless of the consequences. There's something about that word though. Bleed, like bleed. I feel this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And here's the, here's the thing other people need to, they need to realize too. And everyone's worried about no matter who you are and what you do and what you say, how real and authentic and vulnerable you are, or if you're fake as fuck, whatever you are, (laughs) regardless of what it is, regardless of what it is, everybody's not going to like you. Oh yeah. Yeah. And every, everybody is trying to please everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody's worried about everybody liking them. And here's the problem. So good. Regardless who you are and what you do, there's going to be a a good amount of people don't like you either way. And there's a good, be a good amount of people that resonate with you. You know, at least at the end of the day, you know, you're being genuinely you, you're being vulnerable, you're sharing, and you can lay your head down on your pillow and sleep comfortable at night knowing that is you. And anybody that doesn't fuck with that, well, Fuck them. This, Fuck they don't you. matter anyway. Yeah. They, yeah, they don't matter anyways because yeah. everybody out there has their own issues, right? With and, yeah. And, and when they when they see success and they and they feel that their own insecurities come out because they know they want those things. They know they want to feel that, but they know they're not doing the discipline and the shit every day that it takes to get that. And that makes them feel a certain type of way, and then they want to attack you. Yeah. Sorry, what were you gonna say, my man? Oh no, I, I, you <laughs> spurred a question. I was just thinking, like, yeah. You know, clearly you're in your own realm, like your passion, you're dominating the physical domain of life. You've you've scaled mm-hmm. up these companies. You love your family. I'm really curious, like if you could give us a glimpse into your your inner life, like your spiritual faith life, like what what that is to you and and how how does yeah. that how does that uh and help you navigate life or inspire you like privately and it, it you know in today's world if you for say me, anything spiritual some people are going to like it some people won't just like exactly what you're saying no but, yeah for sure yeah like for for me you know for me that's something i'm still honestly trying to figure out i'm definitely a very spiritual person hmm. you know especially in the last five five to six years i'm really becoming more spiritual hmm. um i uh, i was you know baptized catholic at a young age you know that's mm-hmm. kind of how i was raised right i have a, a mom too. that's italian and catholic and a dad that and a dad that's muslim and persian right mm-hmm. so they got split up at a young age totally different religions obviously you know yeah. that would have doomed yeah. from the start you know totally different religion totally different religions and ways of life you know and yeah, um, totally. so that's kind of what i was brought up you know catholic yeah, and, yeah. And, and baptized and then as as, as i got older um you know whenever you're forced into something i think you kind of rebel against it a little bit so like in my eight early 20s and i was like over that you know that was forced on to me i don't want anything forced on me and i kind of like wasn't really looking into anything then and now more recently i definitely feel you know 
I definitely believe in a higher being and I'm yeah. definitely really spiritual. I'm just kind of trying to find my place, just being real. You know, like I don't go to church every, every no, week. Yeah, man. That whole thing. But yeah. I definitely, I definitely feel connected and very spiritual. Um, I feel that. And I'm just trying to really figure it out, you know, what, what, where, where my home is with that. But I definitely don't think there's nothing. You know, I yeah. don't believe in nothing. I just oh, am course. trying to really feel like what connects most with me, at least me personally, just being real. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with f- that, you know? I feel yeah, that, man. I, I awesome. can speak to that, too. You really yeah. res- you resonate a lot with me. And people always want to – they always want to know when they start following me. At some point, this question – comes up a lot of faithful people that's almost like they want me to say it like you know what i mean they want me to take a position on something <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i'll just be honest yeah. like where i'm at in my life every chapter is around for a reason this will probably be like the the bulk of my next chapter is is going where in really searching for something that i can lay my head on but because every religion claims they're right and the organization of it has turned me off in a lot of instances because well what makes the buddhist wrong and you right about how it all went like they they're just as convicted mm-hmm. as you are you know what I mean? And like there's yeah. so much hatred and wars have killed so many people through like God and, and using his name as is as one of these tools. And there's a lot of business behind it. Like at the end of the day, there's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like in so 100%. I'm objectively yeah. speaking and from an honest perspective, like I want to find what that's, speaks that's to my heart. I feel the same way. I feel the exact yeah. everything you just yeah. said is like I would say the same exact thing. I get I, uh, a lot of mud slang on me, bro. I get a ton of mud sling on yeah, me from, from religious sure. people. Yeah. They fucking yeah, know you're, like, you're, yeah, you're, they're, they're holier than thou, you know yeah. what I mean? And you're I'm just like, ah. you're screwed whatever position you take in that matter. And I, yeah. I appreciate your sincerity yeah. around it, Brian. Like, yeah, just earnestly. For sure. But yeah, My, what you just said, yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I, I love God, man. I, mean, I feel uh, like I have a yeah. one-on-one relationship with Him, and that's going to evolve. I'm going to turn that into magic in my life. It is a, mm-hmm. it is something that I have to to really work on. I want answers for things that I know I don't have answers for. When I've lost people, it has destroyed my life. When I lost my grandma, like people that I've loved and lost, I go down these dark rabbit holes. Like if a baby dies, bro, I try to ask questions mm-hmm. to myself and put logical reasons to it, and I can't do it. Like, yeah. well. If yeah. the baby passed away and it never de- developed a personality, it didn't even know its name or who it was. Like my concept of mm-hmm. how you evolve into the next life is so tricky because I want these specific answers because that's how I am na- naturally. And it's so hard to get them where your heart is at peace with them. You know, faith mm-hmm. is a really powerful component, though, I think, to living a beautiful life that has real validity and meaning. And I know it's important. I'm working so hard on it. I'm getting much calmer and, and closer to a version of me that I think I'm going to die with and be very proud to stand by God and Jesus. I'm all there. I'm with all this. It's just some of the particulars of like this religion for this one has been really rough on me over the years. And again, a lot of it's like the Catholic church. I'll be honest, bro. Like it's really hard. I'm a conservative. I'll be honest. Again, you said be honest. They go against yeah. a lot of things with their movement for over sure. the years that seem like it's a little yeah. hypocritical. No offense. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know the rule. Do the rules change as you go? Like being honest. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. See, and this is why I love, I'll weigh in on this. I, uh, I was raised Catholic, drifted away from the practice of, I never renounced Christ or God or anything like that. But but then I've, uh, with four children, I've re-embraced my Catholic faith. I went on like Buddhist meditation retreats. I explored everything, Hinduism, meditation, spirituality, and uh, particularly like 12 steps, like seeing, I had a mentor, a psychiatrist. He talked about this. People would get become, they go through alcoholism. They, yeah. they just do these 12 spiritual principles, but they'll often re-embrace the faith of their youth without like wearing the, the downside of the humanity of it lightly. And so I, I've re-embraced the Catholic faith as a Christian and, you know, Jesus is dear to me. And I'm, I'm always, um, I'm more like, rather than proselytize, just just be what you are. And like, I'd rather have a spiritual conversation with an honest agnostic who's earnestly just real mm-hmm. than a devout religionist. You well, know what I'm saying? That's why me and you do well. Yeah, like, yeah. Me and Matt have had so many deep conversations yeah. and they're all, it's all love. Yeah, one thing I admire about Eric, and you you seem to have the qualities, Brian, I'm he just does. meeting you on the podcast. You he have does. like a, I think this is like a superpower for both of you guys. You're, you're on it. You seem to be honest. And like, I think it, we detect, yeah, yeah, yeah. we detect. For sure that in people and yeah one thing i admire about eric he's earnestly wrestling with these spiritual questions for himself yeah I'll um, get there. but i think you know maybe yeah, our listeners too. can relate like yeah. yeah you are too like you know the west is going through a weird time man like people i've re-embraced the traditional structures and i find deep beauty in them as a 49 year old whereas at 30 i would have been not even attracted to it you know so it's a it's a fascinating life 
But um, yeah, and, and yeah, there's, there could be bad forces inside anything good, by the way. They oh, give yeah, it a bad yeah, name. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, you yeah. can't get it right with everyone. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. But Their uh, insurance companies 100%. bill every, uh, every denomination they bill them the same because the same yeah. 7% of people are going to screw things up in the church and, you know, yeah. whatever. Well, but, uh, I think the reason this is a profound conversation is it's, it's clear we know what we can control and you can control a lot. Decisions, the power of choice is one of the most beautiful gifts we have as a free nation. You have the choice to make and down to the little things like putting your card away. But when we yeah. all, when we pass away, and because we, we know that dark day is coming, it's sad, man. It's heartbreaking. I don't want to leave you guys. I don't want to leave Matt. Like, I struggle with like wanting to know how the other side looks like what is a soul like mm. how do I and it's just so hard like to settle on 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 something and I guess we'll never know yeah. you have to really have faith yeah I think people wrestle and with we this don't, a we lot don't, yeah we do I, I think about that all the time and like yeah. I said the same thing like we you don't know until your time's come I know and then you know yeah. you know we'll get there <laughs> so, like, I don't need to rush you know, this but I, yeah, for sure. I, I, I do want to have peace, sure. Brian, and I know you want to have peace. Like, yeah. And I know at some mm -hmm. point I'm going to really need to c c commit to this, yeah. but I think I could do this personally. This may help people again. I can commit to giving and living in an example of someone that is always mm -hmm. giving and put prioritizing sure. impact. Somehow that's brought me closer to God. Like, I'm just honest. Like I do feel the more I've stepped in the light, it's, it's tightened me up, bro. I'm like, I'm such a disciplined, crazy human. And I like who I am. I love who I've become. I'm so proud mm -hmm. of who Eric has become. I I'm happy with myself. Like I literally am. Yeah, yeah. This is that next thing I need to work on though. And like, I, and yeah. it's just my part of the journey. I'm on, I'll get there. But I yeah. do feel closer to God now than ever, even when I was going to church every Sunday. I feel more honest with God now than ever, and I like who I am. And I like who I am when no one's looking. And that's a more important thing, question yeah. I think people should ask outside of their faith. Well, who are you when no one's looking? That's the person mm -hmm. I needed to figure out. Which is, out. again, yeah, yeah exactly. it's, like, it's like the timeless things that you value a lot, Brian, speaking to that, uh, that, that sense of discipline. Yeah. Being the thing sure. rather like, than... Yeah. <laughs> And that's crazy, Eric. It's crazy what you're saying is because I feel like I'm looking into a mirror. I know. Exact, how you guys are, are you? spirit I'm animals. I'm, I turned 40 in February. Yeah, I'm 41. So we're, we're right there. Yeah. Very similar place. It's kind yep. of crazy what you're saying. You were you know? like, yeah, yeah I like, noticed that in you. You've yeah, said a lot. You've yeah. said a lot of things that it's I've same said. Same exact. Like, like yeah. everything you just said, I feel the exact same way, which yeah. is great because, like I said, here's the thing there's, there's, there is people like us out there, right? It's like connecting and this social media brought us together, right? And I know people feel like there's not people, like, especially, you know, people that want more. And I feel like people, you know, the masses are going to be the masses, right? And, yeah. and a lot of people are, are, are comfortable with, you know, bare minimum and just going through their life nine yeah. to five. And, yeah. but there is like those upper level that want more now are actually going to take act, not just want more. Yeah. Like we're going to take the action to do get something. more. What? And that feels that, that, that can feel lonely. Yeah. Right? You're, yeah. A I have a, I have a question powerful, for you about you know? that. You're, that's powerful. Yeah. You're at a, you've reached this, you, you, you talked about your bottom. Now you're, you're killing it, man. You appear to be in terms of like eight, yeah. eight figure. We asked Brandon Turner a similar question. I'm just flashing on like standing on the yeah. the peak, the lonelier peak of success. There's less people around you. Yeah. What are you aiming at yeah. now? What's the next summit? And what inspires you to like 10x? Like what's on your horizon, Brian? Standing that's where what, you are. That's what you know. That's what um, you know. Here's the thing. Just being like I started talking about being honest. Honestly, um, the apparel has been struggling. You know, the apparel industry right now is very struggling. So mm -hmm. as far as we peaked a, a couple of years ago. Mm. And it's been mm. downward and harder than ever. This year has mm. been lower than in the last four years yeah, and harder that. than ever. So yeah, I'm not at the peak. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually in the industry I'm in. I'm actually feeling like I was during the first four years. When oh, was, wow. and, and the good thing that I'm built different and I, I, I like the challenge and I like the grind. And I, yeah. so I wouldn't be in real, I wouldn't appear that I'm like doing better than ever. And I'm at this peak. Yes. I have multiple other businesses now that are bringing in, a good amount of revenue and I'm this wasn't the only thing I'm doing where in the past this was the only thing I was doing yeah but just being real with you to answer that question I feel like you know you, you climb the mountain and you get to the quote unquote top and then what do you do because you know the climb is hard but once you get to the top it's even harder to maintain that level yeah, it is. and then and then to have the mindset and the work ethic and the and the drive to reach for the next level 
and, and then reach that other climate as well and get to mm. that next level. That's right? real. So it's like, and, and, and then everyone struggles with how much is enough because, you know, mm. everyone wants to talk about balance. But if you want to look at balance, when you focus on one thing, the other thing suffers. When you yeah. focus on growing your business and you focus on going to this mountain and going to the next mountain. Yeah. Your family you're, time is going to there's suffer. trade-offs your family th- I mean you're right yeah. there's trade-offs for everything so you know there's no there's no balance to anything that anyone can follow it's like what is your priorities and what's important to you mm. in their season when I'm trying to grow this this is going to suffer yeah when I'm spending time here th- th- you can't be everywhere at once right and it's yeah. just having reality with being in that and, and realizing that right yeah and prioritizing and just, the like season said, a lot of people yeah. get comfortable when they got to the top of that mountain Right. Mm. That's what it is, man. Physically, mentally, mm. financially, they right? Like how comfortable you get. Yeah. And you eat. You eat, mm. you eat, you get fed and you eat those, you know, you're eating you're eating good meals now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you made it. I feel it. all this. Yeah. Mm. I do. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Feel that. So yeah, it's yeah. like um and you're not you alone, know, man. Definitely. This 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 market is a challenging yeah. market, man. It's a cycle. Sure. Yeah. And what's crazy, yeah. I don't want to get political here, which I could. In a heart, yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna say these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers sure at the we, top. We, agree. <laughs> we do yeah. these right. people at the top, though, man. They yeah. create it. They create this pain. They've stolen wealth, wealth from the middle class, which makes it really hard on mm-hmm. people that are are building businesses. And it, I mean, that is the game plan for yeah. a lot of the evil that's mm-hmm. trying to create globalism. It's a real thing, man. Inflation's on yeah. purpose. They for did sure. this shit, and now they're gonna yeah. fix it with high interest rates. And, and who wins in yeah. that? BlackRock wins. Who wins in that? Vanguard yeah, wins. Who yeah. wins in that? The one yeah, percent of the one percent. The little guy gets yeah. fucked always, and it's yeah. hard, man. Like again, what can I do? I don't want to be mad at the TV. Yeah. I want to be emotionally stable. I want to be able to be calm in the storm. I want to be impactful. For well, sure. this yeah. is a living, breathing example of how I'm going to go fight back. I'm going to go use my voice. Yeah. I'm going to go inspire That's other it. young people and old yeah. people. And, and ch- it doesn't That's matter. It. I'm mm. going to go help children. And I'm going to mm-hmm. teach people what got me to see the world differently and what mm. got me to win. And in the process of doing that, I've only gotten sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. Like I, to the version yeah. of myself now, I was like, oh shit, I was meant to do this. Like, <laughs> it's cool to be oh, yeah. around people that are, like you said, what's your passion? What is, like, are you inspired? It's contagious yeah. to be around this. And now mm-hmm. I have, I'm a contagious guy. You know, but again, like what a strategy to win if you're having a down year, like double down on things, yeah. like go For hard, sure. yeah. build a brand, yeah, yeah. go help the oh, world. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. What else? What yeah. God's doing that? What are your other options? Yeah. I mean, just go forward. Yeah. Well, you can yeah. see how the masses yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they just keep, yeah. they I just keep that. yelling at the TV. Yeah. 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 Doing yeah, man. How old are your kids, Brian? So I have a 16-year-old son, 14-year-old daughter, 11-year-old son, and a 6-year-old daughter. Oh, oh dude, you're girls. blessed. A little sprinkle oh, yeah, of boys yeah. and girls. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. That's yeah. cool. Well, this is your season, yeah. too. You're only, you only have them for yeah. the next 8, 10 yeah. years. So whatever your four companies, I'm sure I'm sure – for sure. Yeah. You know, that's well, I'm proud to I'm proud yeah, to, I'm proud to sure. know you, Brian. I think we're gonna we're gonna Heck yeah. We're yeah, gonna thanks for dipping. I feel I like this is like we I think yeah. we you inspired like, so many I, I, things I in I us. Talk more, but like yeah, for sure. We gotta, yeah. I know. We like, should we'll just like, grab Eric, Eric, you know. Yeah, Eric for sure. I, I see a lot of similarities. Let's go. So we for sure got it. I'm all in. I'm all I'd, I'd love to get to know you more too. Man. Yeah, likewise. Man. I like Great. Matt's energy, Matt's vibe. He's very Matt's very calm. <laughs> like oh, that's a nice. <laughs> you have no idea, man. Like he makes me so much of a better person. I love that. Uh, well, I couldn't yeah, do this without I, him. I, yeah. I, I, it's I like mutual, it. man. I love, yeah. and you guys are totally alike. It's so yeah. funny knowing Eric well. I'm like, this is like a spirit animal of Eric. Yeah, so. he keeps saying shit that no one else says that I say all the time. I'm like, dude, that's I know. It's like you're like verbatim, but yeah, honestly. No, this is it's fun. Like a, I, I will say, um, uh, I in, am inspired by seeing other people out there punching back and doing things that are different. And like, you definitely are making a mark. You're leaving an impact. I'm grateful to know you, brother. And um, yeah, this is yeah. the type of person yeah, we talk about. Right? You have, a, about right you have here. a great way of being about you, Brian. You have a real uh, earnest kindness to you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're. He's I fresh. What too. you do in the world's inspiring and all that. But yeah. I'm I'm more struck yeah. by. People p- must detect that in you and trust you. So. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we'll do this sure. again. I've Brian, where can we send people, man? We want you to yeah, win. Yeah, how can they follow you, you get to know you more? 
So just my social media, which is at Brian Nababi. It's just my first and last N-A-B-A-V-I. name. N-A-B-A-V-I. Yeah. Nababi. N-A-B-A-V-I. Uh, yeah. Connect me there. Awesome, man. We'll make All sure right, we, we, we spread some love your way. We'll get you up to Coeur d'Alene. I'll be down in uh, in Laguna soon in January, so maybe we'll link up, brother. Where Where are you from, Eric? Where do you I, guys live? I grew up in, in Reno, Nevada, yeah. um, Lake Tahoe okay. area, and I've been up here okay. for almost 12 We're years We're in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And that's where our studio yeah. oh, okay. is. Yeah. So, oh, you guys both live there? Yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, we both so live here. Is, we just uh, had a suite. Primary. We had a... It's fun to have in-person guests. We had Mark Rippon. He won the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, He's 61. Of, he cool was a quarterback for the Redskins, but he just nice. sat at this table. Yeah. So In-person is fun for sure. Yeah, isn't and it? I've been to yeah. Portland a couple of times. I've been out to Ed's place. Yeah. He used to have there. Oh, yeah. Were you here when oh, Rob yeah. Deerdeck so came out, out here? A couple of times. Were you here when Rob Deerdeck came out here and they threw that big party out on the lake with like they put barges out there and turned it in like a big ass yeah, on the lake? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, if you get up here, we got to do 2.0 yeah, in good. person, man. Yeah, we'll do yeah. something fun with you in person. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man on a mission.